Bihar Agriculture University. She's an MSc student and uh, she's here uh, with us for almost a uh, little over uh, one year. Um, and then we have been supporting her work uh, through Tropical uh, Legumes Project. That's one project which is funded by BMGF, that is Bell and Melinda Gates Foundation. So when we were deciding about what work she would do, then we thought that it should also match to the objectives of the project in, to which she is contributing. And that's how this uh, work has been chosen. And then I invite you, Ashna. The floor is yours. Respected teachers and my dear friends, good afternoon to one and all present here. I'm Ashna Akbar, Research Scholar in Grounded Breeding Department under Dr. P. Chanila. Today I'm going to present my seminar on the topic Genetic Variability Studies in Grounded Genotypes Under Heat Stress. As an introduction to the groundnut, groundnut is one of the most important legume crops which is primarily grown for its high quality edible oil and protein. Even the horns of the groundnut crop is used in livestock industries. Coming to the area and production globally, groundnut occupies a, uh, nearly 24.7 million hectare areas on the globe of, uh, across 82 countries. However, for India, it is the it has the largest however the in in the India occupies a percent of 25% share in cultivation of crown nut. In India, the area production productivity according to the ECRIP data 2012 and 13 shows that the Kharif season occupies 65% uh, Kharif, uh, so 65% whereas Rabi summer seasons gives 35% of the production, groundnut production per year. Hence, one third of the groundnut production in our country is being obtained through Rabi summer seasons. Hence comes the importance. Also one can see that the productivity of during the Rabi summer season even with lesser areas is quite high. Hence the states which are which grow this summer Rabi crop are Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, and West Bengal. Growing groundnut as a summer crop or in Rabi summer season, or we can say as post rainy crop, we have several abiotic constraints, of which higher temperatures during crop growth is one of the key factors, which reduces the yield. As the literature also cites that high temperatures above 35 degrees reduces Flour, see, reduces flowering severely in groundnut. Further, they also reduce the pollen viability and finally affects the yield. As the groundnut pod development takes underground, soil temperatures in groundnut plays an important role. Where the optimum temperatures for groundnut has been mentioned as uh, with a range of 31 to 33 degrees Celsius and above these temperatures, the groundnut production is severely hampered. With these backgrounds and taking these considerations into account, we designed, I designed, the experiment was designed to study the variation for the yield parameters in groundnut genotypes during heat stress. Also, one to, we, have to, uh, we need to identify heat tolerant genotypes. The experiment was planned during Rabi summer season 2013 where three environments was taken for growing the crop. For the first environment, the sowing that is which was done in January 2013 was taken as control environment. Second in February and March was taken as heat stress environments where the key point was taken into account that the flowering which is the most critical and sensitive stages in groundnut should be exposed to higher temperatures. So with this background the experiment was designed with 63 genotypes in an alpha lattice design on a broadband and furrow system. The air temperatures which was observed during the experiment shows that during non-stress environments, the flowering period varied to a 
extended the days which we recorded as days to 75 percent flooding that was completed with within a maximum uh, within a range of 26 days however it significantly reduces to 18 or 20 days that that means a reduction of nearly about more than a week was observed in the heat stress environments when compared to non heat stress environments taking 35 degree as critical temperatures for flowering this was categorized so under non stress environment as we can uh, see only 11 hours were observed that is only in 3 days it was observed th temperatures above 35 degree however in e2 it was 75 and e3 in it was 110 hours which shows that these environments were exposed severely to heat the flowering conditions in these environments were severely exposed to heat stress the soil temperatures during our during the experiment was for non stress environment it was average of 17 degree to 33 whereas for stress environments it's ranged from 20 up till 40 degrees which is quite high from the optimum temperatures which is required for pod development and other especially for pod growth and development pooling of the genotypes for this study the genotypes such as ICGV 0226 uh, these are already identified as heat tolerant genotypes or we can say genotypes which are perform high yielding during high temperatures whereas ICGV 93468 also known as Aftar is a released variety in, in UP state for growing under summer seasons along with these genotypes advanced breeding lines were also considered where we pulled together all these to see the differences which varied from these genotypes in the advanced breeding lines taken from uh, grounded breeding with all these basic experimental designs and ideas the observations the key observations were taken for flowering maturity pod yield data such as pod yield kernel yield shelling percentage crop and pod growth rate the methodology uh, first in uh, in our methodology first we estimated the ANOVA and uh, GCV and PCV which shows which would be uh, which will indicate the variability among the genotypes in our study secondly we did uh, I didn't like we identify we selected the traits based on heritability and genetic advance and also finally we identified some suitable genotypes for growing under heat stress conditions the pool analysis data shows that our the environment was highly significant also the genotypes which we took were highly significant during the experiment the data on GCV and PCV shows that high GCV and PCV was observed for pod and kernel yield whereas it was low for days to flowering maturity shelling outturn and oil content pus high irritability was observed for all the traits in the study whereas the high genetic advance was obtained for pod and kernel yield 100 kernel weight harvest index and pod growth rate as there were significant differences in uh, among the genotypes within the environment in this study there was a wide range in all for all the traits in our studies for days to flowering it is shown that the days which required to reach 75 percent flowering was approx 15 days whereas it significantly reduced to 8 or 9 days similarly for pod and kernel yield the variation in the uh, uh, in the genotypes was from 2 tons to 6 tons for all the stressed and non-stressed nearly for all the non-stressed and heat stress environments similar range was for 100 uh, shelling percentage from 38 percent up to 73 percent also 100 kernel weight slightly decrease in stress environments whereas it ranged from a minimum of 17 to a maximum of 59 grams here are the comparisons between the environments of uh, that is non-stress and heat stress environments 
for the traits, these to 75 percent flowering, all the genotypes showed decrease. That and the decrease was in a range from 15 to 20 percent in the stressed conditions. For pod yield, not all, but 50% of the genotypes, nearly 50% reduces, which was like as decrease under high stresses are expected, but still 50% of the genotypes have shown these values, which range from 70 to 25%. Yield, uh, the reduction percent for kernel shelling percentage has led to more reduction in kernel yields, because kernel yield depends both on pod yield and shelling percentage. While maximum reduction was shown for 100 kernel weights in under stressed environments, which was to a maximum of 40, nearby 40%. 40 100 kernel weight and shelling percent uh, decrease was shown by all nearly like 75 to 70, 80% genotypes. Whereas I already mentioned pod yield was for nearly 50% genotypes. So this was a comparison for different traits for the, all the genotypes between non-stressed and heat stressed conditions. But crop growth rate in our experiment was slightly got increased during heat stress conditions when compared to non-stressed. On the basis of pod yield data, we have grouped our genotypes into three categories. First, maximum of the genotypes, nearly 50% showed a re reduce in yield, which are shown by this bar diagram, wherein genotypes like some genotypes they have shown abrupt reduction such as ICGV 97183 and ICGV 01232 shows abrupt reduction whereas some gradual decrease also in yield is known has been shown for genotype TMV2 and 99001. But if we directly see from environment 1 to 2 and 3 there is re reduction whether it's a uh, very high or low but nearly 50% of the genotypes in our study have showed, shows these conditions. Few genotypes that is JGG31, ICGV03057, ICGV07038 and GG20 have shown increase in yield when compared from non-stressed and heat stress environments. The trend lines shows this increase in yield from E1 to E3. This was the second group. The third group was that we also identified some stable genotypes during our during the experiment. These genotypes have more or less similar yields in all the three environments that of which two environments are heat stress and one is non-stress conditions. This the significance of stability was also uh, confirmed through calculating coefficient of individual coefficient of var variability. So these were the three groups of which uh, from where we identified different genotypes. Uh, identification of the genotypes specific to the environment that is for non-stressed condition ICGV 07012 was identified as the best genotype however for stress conditions 060404 environment 2 and 03042 for environment 3 was identified as uh, oil content is an important factor in groundnut we also identified some genotypes with high oil yield content where ICGV 05155 was identified for non-stress conditions while the genotype with high yield and high oil content was same in environment 2 whereas ICGV 0307038 was was observed in environment 3. This additionally this line that is ICGV 07038 is under ECRIP trials for oil content. Based on the overall mean uh, pod yield in respective environments that is non-stress and heat stress environments we have identified top seven genotypes which have shown more higher yields during both non-stress and stress conditions even though with slight or more or less decrease but they have performed superior to those they have good yields even though they are uh, uh, in comparison to the stable even though we identified stable also but these genotypes have higher yield in compared to those stable genotypes 
The high performing genotypes was also confirmed as heat tolerant genotypes according by calculating heat stress tolerant index according to Fernandez where uh, the, uh, the index value for environment heat stress environment 2 and 3 for those seven genotypes are ranked as follows. Uh, here values above 1 are considered as good whereas these uh, genotypes have shown much higher values. This was the experiment performed and the results. Now here are the conclusions which was obtained during the study. In the, we observe significant variation under heat stress or non-stress environments for all the traits and all the uh, between or for all the traits. So we have scope for selection for uh, selection of genotypes in near future. Secondly, we have five traits which were obtained with high genetic advance along with heritability and improvement, uh, genetic improvement through selection for these traits will be useful in future. As on the basis of yield, three groups were already categorized. So we identified seven genotypes with top yielding, uh, four genotypes with slight increase in yield and nearly four genotypes with stable yield for performance in both non-stress and heat stress environments. The future scope of the research could be led to like the genotypes which, it, uh, we had, which we, I have identified could be used in breeding programs to develop uh, heat tolerant varieties. They can also be useful uh, for studying uh, mapping population using uh, and identifying QTLs and also further in-depth studies could be done to understand the mechanism for heat tolerance. These are some of the pictures taken during the experiment. The sowing, the field area, uh, the harvesting and the drying of the ground agent types. Uh, lastly, I would like to uh, give my ha uh, gratitude and heartfelt thanks to Groundnut Breeding Department ICRISAT, Dr. P. Janila, who has always been there during entire my research work and encouraged me to perform this uh, research work in a uh, every t in a better way and help me in, in each and every possible way. I would also like to thank SS Manoha and Dr. Murli who have guided me and uh, always answered my questions whenever I have approached them. Also, I would like to thank all the technical and supporting staff without which this experiment would haven't been complete. I would like to give my sincere thanks to the advisory committee of my university, the chairman, Dr. Arun Sharma, Dean Postgraduate Studies, who have encouraged us to conduct our experiments in this institute. My sincere thanks to Meteorology Department from ICRISAT and special thanks to Dr. Keshav Rao who has uh, uh, given his special time uh, to and let me understand the uh, temperature uh, queries. I would also like to thank biometrics team, Dr. Abhishek Rathor, Ravi Khan, Anil and Roma who have led me, who have helped me in all the possible may, uh, ways during, uh, for all my statistical data and helped me uh, interpret these whenever I have approached them. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank LSU and Housing and Food Services, ICRISAT, who have always been there for all my administrative work and helped me to have a better and comfortable stay at ICRISAT and I would also like to thank to each and every one present here. Thank you. Will we give a, another big round of clap to Ashna. Thank you so much Ashna. And uh, thank you uh, everyone for being here and for your valuable suggestions and comments. And um, I mean, I should, we should also acknowledge the financial assistance uh, for her fellowship and also for the work from uh, BMGF at this moment and also all the support from LSU. Thank you. <laughs>